Hello there, it's Sarah from Paper Lovely. Thanks for joining me today. I've got some cards to share with you that I created using the Spellbinders December Small and Large Die Kits of the Month. And I'm doing something a little differently this month because these kits were really made to go together. I decided I'm going to still create two different videos for you, but I'm going to combine the kits together. You wouldn't necessarily need both kits in order for them to work, but they really are sort of specifically made to work with one another. So for this one, I am going to be doing the flip cards, which has the main large die that was included in the large kit. And then I'm pulling in some of the additional dies from the smaller kit. Here I'm just taping everything together and getting them ready to run through my big shot. And then tomorrow I'm gonna have another video with an additional three cards that I made using some of the sentiments, but mostly the floral dies that came in both of the kits. So here I'm running my sentiment through my big shot and guys, I did it again. I keep forgetting that I have to add the outline in order to get it to cut out the full circle or full shape. So I had already run that through previously and now I'm running it through one more time, adding that outer circle so that I have the circle sentiment cut out. So I've gone ahead and cut out all of my pieces. I'm leaving most of that out because um, just for the sake of time. But here you can see I'm scoring that larger die piece and I used MFT's grout gray for the base of my card. Just scoring that along those lines and just checking how that works for the flip. I've also used two pattern papers, and these were left over from a very old Simon Says Stamp kit, so if I can find them, I will link them for you, but I'm not sure that there's gonna be any left around anywhere. But I'm using my art glitter glue, I'm gonna place these down, just leaving a small border of that gray cardstock around the edge, and then also around that circle section there. And then here I've got my sentiment and I did find that using the thinner paper um, that I get from Michaels, I just buy them in the huge rainbow packs, it cut out a little bit better. So you may want to give that a try when you're doing these more detailed sentiment cuts like this. Now mine did have a few little straggly edges and I think that's probably because I run it through my machine twice and it probably doesn't cut exactly right. Um, so if yours, you can get it through in one shot, I would try doing that, but mine, it, it takes two and I have to use a shim to make sure um, that I'm getting everything cut all the way through. So anyways, I just take my uh, little pokey tool there and run that around my letters and that usually helps to fix any trouble I'm having with that. Now I had glued down that sentiment, I, I backed it with the pink circle and then glued that down and realized I wanted something in the center. There's not a die for that, um, but you could easily just trim down a piece of paper to roughly like three quarters of an inch and it would give you the same border that you have around the other side. I decided to grab some black glitter washi tape from my stash and I ran that across in the center. Here I'm taking my fingertip craft knife I'm just running that under my sentiment to help loosen that up a little bit. And then I will sort of just angle my tape and cut that off there and then slide it underneath that circle. And it would have been much easier if I would thought ahead and put this down before I glued the circle. So if you're gonna do this, I would definitely do it that way. Um, but this worked and then I just added a little bit of glue under those edges again and pressed those down with my fingers until it dried. And you'd never know that I didn't have it down before I placed the circle on top. And then I just took my scissors and trimmed off those uh, edges that were hanging off there. And that's gonna complete the first card. Here I'm just giving you a quick look that this does fit perfectly inside your A2 sized envelopes. So jumping here into card number two, I decided I wanted to try some paper down the center of that strip. So I have cut this to about three quarters of an inch wide. 
and I found a circle that just about matches. It's just slightly larger than the one that is already cut there. Um, but I'm gonna line that up and then I can go ahead and run that through my Big Shot and that will give me the nice curve edges that I needed to go ahead and have that border around the circle. So here I'm lining that up. I just took my ruler so I know where to trim that top portion. And I'll trim that off and then I'm gonna go ahead and layer everything down. So this card base is made from MFT's Fuse Green. It, it's called a green color, but it really has more of a mustardy yellow sort of feel to it. It's very vintage looking. And then I'll take these two smaller strips and I'm going to place those around that circle as well. And I wanted to pull in that little bit of gray from the stripe off to the side, so I cut out a circle for the background out of MFT Cement Gray. And I'll go ahead and glue the sentiment down on top of that. And then I'll go ahead and glue this down on the circle and you'll see I forgot here I wanted to flip this landscape and then pressed it down and then thought oh no but I was uh, quick enough that I was able to pull it up um, and then I turned that so this is what it would look like to have um, a landscape card and keep in mind you can actually flip this four different directions um, so you could have the circle pretty much anywhere you wanted it on a card And that will complete card number two. Okay, so for card number three, I wanted to try something different. I have gone ahead and used some black cardstock, um, and this is Recollections cardstock. It's not as thick as I would have liked to have my card base be, but when I added the paper on, it works pretty well. I am out of my uh, black licorice cardstock. So there you'll see, I'm using that same circle that I used to cut the strip for the center, um, but I wanna make a spinner card this time. So I've used that same circle and I've used the guidelines there to place that down. And I'm gonna go ahead then and trim that out so I'll have the full circle cut out and that'll give me a space to have my sentiment spin around. Now, the next sort of trouble I came into is that the center of that circle is actually right on that score line. So I played around with this for a little while finally figured out that if I take my fishing line and wrap that right along where that crease is and again you're gonna want to use heavier cardstock um, I was able to make mine work but I'm afraid that the fishing line is probably gonna start digging into the top and bottom of that crease the more that it's spun so I don't this card will work but if I were giving it to a kid I don't know how long it would hold up so make sure you're using a heavier cardstock so there you can see, I went ahead and knotted that fishing line together in the center of my opening. And then I sandwiched that knot in between the two circle sentiments that I created. And here I'm gonna spin that around a bunch of times and just give that a try, and it works. So again, um, I have just taken that fishing line. I know I was sort of rambling there. Um, I took that fishing line and just went around the card knotting it in the center of where that circle opening was and then I sandwich that knot in between uh, the two circle sentiments so that they'll be able to spin around and the knots hidden. Now you can see the fishing line but just barely especially because this is a dark card base and I'm okay with seeing just that little bit of clear fishing line. You really don't notice it unless you're looking for it. Here again I'm going to place down the um, 
side panels using some art glitter glue and I've grabbed some of the glitter washi that came in the card kit for the December card kit for Spellbinders. I'm adding that along here. I'm again gonna trim off the edges and then I'll take my fingertip craft knife and just run that along the curved edge of the circle so that I'll have that match right up. And that will complete card number three. Here are a few close-ups of the finished cards. In the description box below you'll find my blog post which has additional photos and links to the supplies I used. If you enjoyed the video please leave me a comment or a thumbs up and subscribe for more. Thanks again for watching and I'll see you in the next video.